gonna try and bring out my bow and uh, see if I can shoot a couple. There we go. Yes, I'm gonna try and shoot that guy. He was focusing me before. Take that. Hello reformers and welcome back to Warband Native. Now when we left off we just took the last remaining fief that the Nords had available. And that means that they have been eliminated. Yes, in my off-screen time they were eliminated and we don't have to worry about them anymore. Hopefully. Yeah, because sometimes, you know, the vassals do like to stick around a little bit and they like to show themselves every now and again. Anyway. What we're doing now is we are setting our sights on the Vagiers, and this is going to be very difficult. I, I personally feel like this is probably going to be more difficult than tackling the Nords, and uh, it, it might be kind of on par with dealing with the Rodox as well. Because even though the Rodox are actually extremely good at what they do in terms of defensive measures and everything, the Vagiers, on the other hand, are a little bit more offensive when it comes to their specialties because obviously they have Vagir Marksmen. The Vagir Marksmen are crazy good archers, best archers in the game and uh, well we're probably gonna see exactly why they are the best archers in the game. I think we actually did attempt to take one of the Vagir's fiefs a while ago and uh, the fief in question only had a couple of Vagir Marksmen and uh, well it basically said to us, yes, you don't want to siege this ever again, because I think we lost, like, almost all of our people or something like that. Yeah, there, there's one. Did you see that? That Vagir Marksman right there was going toe-to-toe -to -toe with us and dealing so much damage that I literally almost got stumbled off the ladder, which is not great. And now you can also see here that we are having some issues coming in. And, uh, well, hopefully... Hopefully we're going to be able to penetrate their defenses and just get onto the battlements. This is one of those castle layouts which I'm, yeah, not a big fan of. Not a big fan of. Just literally because, I know, I know, you know, usually I'd say something like, Oh, yes, this ladder is very thin. It's very difficult for me to get a footing on this. But the main reason why I don't like this is because it just has so many ways for enemies to come up and actually deal damage to us. Like, on the one side, you have infantry coming in from the side here, and on the other side, you have archers potentially shooting you, and then you have the courtyard, which is also going to be a bit of a problem, because obviously you're going to have enemies attempting to shoot you from down there, which is not great, and especially considering they're the GM marksmen most of the time, it's not great, is it? No, no, not at all. Anyway, Thankfully, I'm able to eliminate these guys relatively easily, but if these guys were all Vagir Marksmen, which I assume is going to be the case later down the line, because let's face it, we're probably going to be fighting something much, much more difficult than the garrison in a random castle. Now, this castle is very nearby to Rivercheck, and we're going to be attempting to take Rivercheck after this, but it really depends. I haven't looked and seen what units they have in the garrison there just yet. I can assume that they're probably going to have probably above 50 Vagir marksmen in the garrison there. And suffice it to say, that is a crazy number. That is a real crazy number, and I'm not looking forward to fighting them there at all, because if the layout is as I remember, then it's going to be one of those devastating, long, drawn-out kind of siege situations where it just is pain. Absolute pain most of the time. So hopefully it's not going to be like that. It really depends. I mean, we're going to find out, obviously, very, very shortly. Hilariously enough, me saying shortly is not really going to work out right now because it seems like I'm actually going to lose this, which is kind of amazing. I would have thought that we would have won this pretty easily considering it's just a castle, but this is where the Vagir Marksmen are coming into their own. Do you see how many Vagir Marksmen are down there? They don't even have the height advantage. They don't even have the height advantage, and they're doing so much damage to us. It's crazy. Let's get our archers in here, shall we? Oh, we actually already did. We already did get our archers in here. So it seems like they no longer have any ammunition. And uh, do we have more reinforcements coming in? Yeah, we do have more reinforcements coming in, but it's probably not going to really make too much difference. I mean, I just... Ah. 
yes. I needed to very, very carefully get around the corner there, but it seems like I wasn't careful enough. Okay, so let's see how many we were able to kill. All right, so you could see there, there's actually 28 Vagia marksmen still available. Let's have a look and see. Wow, look at that. We literally lost that many units? That is crazy. That is really, really crazy. Okay, so, hmm. I don't know how I'm going to do this. Let's see. I have 38 remaining. That is not enough. That is definitely not enough. So I'm going to have to retreat. And we will have to wait for some time. This, oh, this is definitely something that I didn't want to do. Really did not want to do that. Because now we are in a much, much more difficult situation. It means we're going to have to go back to Beluga Castle. Even so, you know, with our forces back on their feet. But with the enemy's forces also back on their feet, and then we're going to have to run into infantry as well as Vagia marksmen. And that is not good, because those infantry are going to be delaying us. They're going to try to be, well, playing decoy, basically, to allow the Vagia marksmen even more time to shoot at us. And you saw how effective that was. I mean... They weren't even in good positions, and yet they were able to deal so much damage that we literally had to retreat. We only had 38 units remaining, after all. So, this is not good. This is not good. And if you can imagine this just being a castle, and then thinking about how we're going to even attempt to take Rivercheg, which is obviously going to have many, many more Vagia marksmen here, because I would assume that there was about maybe 40 or so Vagia marksmen here. And there's probably going to be about double in a town. So I'm not, a, not, not looking forward to it. Not looking forward to it. But we'll try our best. Who knows? I mean, the Rodok sharpshooters, albeit how good they are, you know, they are very good. They're probably not as quick as the Vagia marksmen to actually begin shooting. So that's obviously a bit of an issue. Anyway, let's just try and deal as much damage as I can, maybe just to eliminate some of these archers here, just to get them out the way. Bear in mind that the Vagia marksmen are easy to kill, it's just actually getting there first, because, well, they're going to be very difficult to eliminate if they actually start focusing you. If they start focusing you, then they're just going to continue shooting you much faster than you can shoot them. And so it's just going to be one of those things. Like, like for example, this guy. If he'd continued firing at me right there, I think we probably would have taken probably another 20 damage or so. Which would have been bad. Which would have been very bad. All right, so how many have we killed so far? Okay, we've killed 28 of them. Now, that looks good, right? Yeah, that looks good. But don't let the numbers fool you. Because that happened before. We were actually in a really good position. And then we just all of a sudden disintegrated. We melted away under the enormous pressure that the Vagia marksmen tend to give off, which is weird because you wouldn't think that they would be so great, you know, but they are. They're very good. So let's see if I can just get past here, try and take out a couple of archers. That's what I'd like to do at least. There we go. And maybe we can... There we go. Yes. I'm trying to aim for the head here as well because obviously if I can aim with the head then they should die almost instantly. Oh, hello. You surprised me. All right, so as you can see, most of the enemies have been eliminated by the looks of things. Yeah, that was quick. Okay, so that was much, much quicker than I anticipated. I actually thought that the Vagia marksmen would be in much better positions. But it seems like having it come down to whether we were able to storm the battlements or not, that actually made a huge difference because our archers were then able to, well, just shoot them while the Vagia marksmen focused on the wrong units. I guess they were focusing on our infantry or our cavalry or maybe even me. And that gave our units enough leeway to do the damage that was necessary to eliminate the enemy. So that's great. That's fantastic. That's really, really good to see that. Hopefully I'll be able to, uh, you know, hopefully take out a couple more of these guys. They haven't been shot at all, by the way. So if I do miss here at any point, then we might be in trouble because they're probably just going to focus me down. I think there's just one enemy remaining. Is this him? I... No, there's actually a couple left. Oh, interesting, interesting. Okay, I had no idea. 
I don't exactly know where they are because apparently one of the Vagia marksmen was able to kill a sword sister? That's very weird. I would have expected a sword sister. I mean, look, here's one right here. They're very good. They are decked out in basically plate armor and they have good stats. So it's very strange to see a Vagia marksman actually be able to get one over on the sword sister, but. Oh well, never mind, there you go. The Sword Sister apparently was wanting to take revenge for the loss of her comrade, which is perfectly acceptable. We lost a whole bunch of units in the previous siege anyway, so pretty happy to gain some revenge there. Anyway, you can see here, look at that. We just lose so many units against so few. It's crazy. Anyway, there you go. Boyar Play was able to escape, and uh, I guess I'll be capturing or attempting to rescue most of these prisoners because at the end of the day, we really cannot afford to leave them. <laughs> Otherwise, we're just going to be so, so low in terms of troop numbers. It's just going to be awful. Anyway, castles. Who do I want to give this to? Lord Ramask, I guess, maybe? Uh, I, yeah, I guess this guy? No, he already has 100, so that's perfectly fine. Right, well, I guess I'm just going to wait here for some time, and we'll see what happens, but... River Chegg, I'm going to need to scout it. I am going to need to scout it, but me scouting it, I don't know whether it's really going to be a very wise idea. If King Yaroglek is around, and there's, a, and there's an extremely fast vassal, then we might have some problems. Who knows? Like that guy, for example. He's got 42. He's running at 5.0 speed. We're running at 6.2, so technically we shouldn't get cornered, but you never know. Maybe... They've got a, a trap set for us or something. But anyway, let's go and see what's actually going on. Oh, Count Beheshtur. If you remember, Count Beheshtur was actually one of our companions that we made into a vassal. And he decided to defect away from us, which is kind of amazing. So what we're going to do is I'm actually going to murder him. Yes, I am going to murder him. And you are, yeah, you are, you're a terrible person. You're a terrible person, Boyar Beheshtur. We're going to take him out. All right, so 91 against, what is it, 36 or something like that? I don't care how many he has. We must exact vengeance upon him. That is the way we must do things. All right, so we do have an absolutely overwhelming advantage when it comes to field battles because our cavalry count is much better than, than most. So we should have a pretty easy time of things, hopefully. And, uh, yeah, I'm actually unsure where Beheshtur is. I'd like to eliminate him myself, if at all possible. Is that him? Is he still wearing the gear that I gave him? If he's still wearing that gear, I'm gonna... Yeah, there we go. We, we got him. We knocked him unconscious. Take that. Take that, you scoundrel. And give me back my... Well, I actually already took my thieves back, I think, that he defected with. But still, it's, it's really... I think that's kind of unheard of to have one of your own companions leave your service as a vassal. That's not really happened to me before, so I think maybe once, maybe? Hmm. It really depends. Sometimes they do that literally because they're just not happy in general with what you're doing, but it's a very rare occurrence, at least from my experience. But anyway, there you go. One enemy remains. He might escape. Nope was unable to escape from that sword sister. Yes, good work. All right, so there you go. We were able to eliminate him with no casualties. Ah, he managed to escape. I actually very, very much wanted to throw him in the prisoner's tower, but unfortunately that will not be the case this day. So let's take a look at Rivercheck and see exactly what we have to deal with. <laughs> oh my. All right, so this is going to be impossible I th I'd say probably I mean here's the thing basically what we have to do here is we have to call for a campaign and we basically have to have almost all of our vassals along for the ride to be able to gain a significant battle advantage so I suppose considering Jeremus actually leveled up it would be, probably be a good idea for me to uh, spec some points with him and I'm actually unsure exactly what to give him because he already has insane things. So I guess I could just give him another point in first aid and I guess another point in trainer. I guess that makes sense. He is actually a very good crossbowman, as you can see there. So I'm pretty happy with him right now. And uh, yeah, we'll just speak to someone random 
and we're going to start a new campaign. And we'll see whether we can get a couple of our vassals to get over here in good time. Because I know that some of the vassals are pretty slow when it comes to reacting. So let's see what actually happens. I've got to be a bit careful here because King Yaroglek could attack us. Alright, so I thought I'd, uh, you know, just cut back here because this is a bit of a pause screen and I kind of want to show you something before we head in to our siege. Now, I know what you're thinking. Are you sieging River Chegg reformers? That's a bad idea. Yeah, well, I'm actually not sieging that at the moment. What I'm going to try and do instead is just kind of try and weaken the surrounding area by taking basically everything else that I can. So I'm trying to take Slezg Castle right now. And uh, there is a vassal that has just appeared who has a an almighty 291 in his army. I have no idea who it is. So I'm going to have to find out. Is it is it Lord Druli? I think it's Lord Druli. I think it is. So that's pretty crazy. He is an absolute beast if he has 291. Anyway, we're going to be heading in here with our three allies and we have a battle advantage of five. So technically, we outnumber the enemy and this should give us, well, enough of a jolt to be able to take it, hopefully. I mean, that's the thing. I couldn't really wait any longer because I'm going to run out of food to attack, so I had to make a decision whether we were going to attack Ruvacheg with a less than adequate force, or whether we were going to change target and go for something else. And so I'm going to attempt to take Slezg Castle here. Now, if we're able to take this, then I think they only have two towns remaining, and I just got shot. Obviously I did. We, You know what, I should probably just get out my bow a little bit earlier and just try and shoot a little quicker so that we can eliminate these annoying people from the side here and that's gonna make much more sense in my opinion now do bear in mind that I'm not gonna be too um, shall we say sentimental about the units that we currently have on the battlefield at the moment if they happen to die then they happen to die and they're doing their duty you know that's basically what we've got to look at it as because we cannot safeguard every single unit and if it just so happens that I lose 90% of my army, then that's just how it has to be. And I'm going to have to go back to the drawing board and see if I can recruit a whole bunch of others from other places. We do have the entirety of the Saranid Kingdom, as well as the Kyrgyz Kingdom, and the Swadians, as well as the Nords now, to draw on when it comes to recruits. So I don't have to worry so much about being able to find volunteers. So hopefully we'll be able to do that if the worst does befall us, which is probably going to happen. I mean, let's face it. I think we're probably... Wow, really? Are you serious? They're seriously focusing me in between my shots and my strikes? That's, uh, that's kind of crazy. That is kind of crazy. Okay, so let me see what I can do here. I'm going to try and bring out my bow and uh, see if I can shoot a couple. There we go. Yes. I'm going to try and shoot that guy. He was focusing me before. Take that. Vagia Marksman. Yes. Another one of them, isn't it? Uh, okay, now let's see if I can maybe focus that two-handed user. Nope, never mind. Right. Okay, so we're actually getting onto the battlements here. If we're able to succeed a little bit more here, and uh, maybe, just maybe, get... Mm, maybe to the top of those stairs over there, then I think we will be in the best position possible. I'm actually unsure what's going on here. Ah. Oh, there's a lot of archers behind this building. Yes, you can see that. Okay, let's see if I can... Hello, you're trying to shoot me. I got you. Yeah, there we go. Yeah, they're, try they're trying to shoot me. This guy's trying to shoot me. And a couple of others were, were trying to shoot me, but uh, thankfully we were able to take them out beforehand. I'm going to just try and get a couple of arrows here. And maybe I can get some more? No? Uh, yes? Okay, a little bit. Seven. Seven of them. Thankfully my archers have now come in over here and they're actually in the best possible location. You can see them right there, just on the side of the stairs, 
raining down bolts and arrows and all kinds of wonderful things. So yeah, if we're able to take this, then as I say, I think the Vagias then just have two towns remaining, and I think they also, yeah, I think actually while I was waiting for my vassals to appear for the campaign, I think King Yaroglek actually went off and took Beluga Castle, so it's, uh, yeah, we're gonna have to retake that, but you don't have to watch that, I don't think, I, c I can probably take that back by myself just by threatening them or something like that. They'll probably be like, yes, take it. It's, uh, it's not worth it, and so on and so forth. I'm probably going to die here as well, but we've weakened the garrison significantly enough, hopefully, to be able to come back in here after a small respite, and we'll be able to then deal the decisive blow. Now, bear in mind that these guys are not exactly bad when it comes to actually fighting in melee. They're not as good as the Nords, of course, but uh, they're pretty fast when it comes to shooting. Isn't that great? Oh well, never mind. I did need to kind of take a bit of a rest after all, and we did eliminate 161. We lost 107 of our allies, 28 of our own units. And let's just take a look and see. Yeah, look at that. They only have 32 remaining. If we were able to just stay alive a little bit longer there, I think we probably would have had the victory, but it's okay because it's easy enough. Now, the one problem I'm going to foresee is River Chegg. I'm not entirely sure how we're going to do that without more vassals turning up. Let's hope more of them turn up. Otherwise, that will be it for this episode. I thank you very much for watching, and I will see you next time.